Well, it's Friday night, and I'm uh, driving home, and I wanted to talk about, I don't know, I wanted to talk about when other people say it's impossible, and some of the quotes that go along with success. You don't enter the race. You can't possibly win a race. Right? I, I think we've all said that. If you, if you don't enter the race, you have no shot at winning it. And I think about being scared in junior high school about trying out for lacrosse. My friend Tom Tom D, he was a great lacrosse player. I mean, phenomenal. I never played lacrosse before. He said, hey, come out. And I was scared, but I did it. You know why? Because Tom Tom wanted me to do it. And I said, okay, let, let, me, let me do it. Let me try it. Seems like fun. And I ended up starting playing lacrosse and I had no idea what I was doing. And it's almost funny reminiscing years, but you know, years later, because I would literally, I played the crease, so that's midfield, and sometimes Tom would, you know, try to get it to me in the crease and for me to get it. And I, I, I didn't have any skill at lacrosse; I had just started. So I would say, Tom, just keep it, and Tom would like run down the field and score time after time, right? But I entered, and I tried, and I made effort, and I got better. And in high school, I wasn't a superstar, right? I played football, I ran track, I did a lot of boxing. But I remember even teammates, friends saying, hey, there's no way you're gonna play college ball. And I walked on it at Alabama and I got a partial scholarship for one summer, moved up the depth chart from being I don't know, 12th or 14th on the depth chart at running back to being second team, which means I, I was about to play. When I had boxed on and off for many years, I remember being in Miami and I was uh, in law school. And I said, ah, you know what, I'm getting out of shape, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go boxing. And people are like, ah, oh, you're chubby, you're this, you're that. I won a Golden Glove tournament. I won some local tournaments. I went to nationals. I fought internationally. I got invited to be on the US Army team, boxing team. I got an invite from the USA boxing team to be a member of their team and to travel with them in an attempt to make the Olympic team. But I went to law school. But what did I do? Even in law school, I kept boxing. I kept entering the race. And when 2004 Olympic trials came about, people said, oh, there's no way. You're not in good enough shape. You haven't been fighting enough. But I, I got there. I went to Reading, Pennsylvania, and I went there, and I competed. When I became an attorney, I remember my first job. My boss saying, "Ah, there'll never be a good, there'll never be a good trial attorney. You can't even remember people's names." I could remember stories, but I'm not good at names, and I'm not good at directions. And I kept on. I entered the race. I've been practicing for 18 years now, and I've had a lot of success. I've had a lot of people you know, gain their freedom, and now I have people who are, you know, I'm, I'm benefiting from, from the personal injury perspective. I bring this up because I've had cases, and I've had a lot of cases. And when I was young and inexperienced, I would often ask attorneys, hey, what do you think, other attorneys in town? I remember one case I took on, 
for a young man in Miami. And I found that the cop was lying. I caught him in a lie to the court. When we were set for trial, this officer doesn't show up and the state asked for a continuance and says that there's some emergency or he was training, so something to that effect. And I was skeptical. So I played investigator and I reached out to the chief secretary in Miami. And I asked for, requested, his, his timesheets, this officer. And I found out that he wasn't on leave, that he wasn't in an emergency situation, that he wasn't in special training, but he had simply taken a day off. So he lied to the court. And what I did was I wrote a motion, a very detailed motion about what I did and how this police officer lied to the state attorney's office and the state attorney's office ultimately proffered a lie that you know they were unaware of it wasn't their fault and that was the reason that the trial had been continued and i remember calling up you know pretty well-known attorney in miami and that attorney said to me roger that's like career suicide if you file that you're gonna get a whirlwind of negative. You're gonna pay for it, your clients are gonna pay for it. And my heart is, do the right thing. If you're gonna make an allegation, make sure it's proven. I had, the, I, had <laughs> I had the chief's secretary on my witness list, and I had the documents and the email that she had sent me. I pulled the recording from from the, the court to re, you know re, remind the, the court and I put it all in a motion and this attorney said don't do it don't enter the race there's no way you're going to get crushed I entered it I filed that motion and two days later you know what happened some of you probably thinking ah you probably got slammed the system went against you I got an email from the prosecutor saying that my client's case was dismissed. And you know why they did that, folks? They did that because I stood up. They did that because I put my ducks in a row. I explained everything in the motion. Case was dismissed because they didn't want to have to deal with a police officer that lied to the court. I had another case not too long ago case that was in the news and reached out to an attorney and said hey this is what I'm doing and I remember him just saying what is wrong with you like how, how could you do that like you, you don't do that as a defense attorney but the way I think was or the, th the way I was thinking was I got to get mercy for my client I got to humanize my client I got to I got to do this I got to do it this way but it's outside the norm it's outside the box of what every skilled top attorney would do. I did it my way. I was scared because I kept hearing that other attorney going, what are you doing? But I went with my gut, what's got me through things, what's helped me in my life. And you know what happened to that case? It got dismissed. I'm not saying this to tell you that I'm a great attorney. I don't think I don't think that. I think that God has given me a gift and it's to help people. And as a young kid, I was very, you know, inquisitive about things. I asked a lot of questions. I used to say, "Why come? Why come?" And my dad would say, "How come?" Right? And we would explain to me how to verbalize myself better. Every battle that I've ever entered, I've been nervous. Could have been football, could have been track, could have been boxing, could have been that lacrosse with Tom, Tom, Tommy D. Um, 
going to law school in Miami where I didn't know anybody, um, taking a chance, you know, taking the bar, opening up my own practice, knowing the whole time that I had naysayers. And I continue to have naysayers. People who say, oh, you can't do it that way. You shouldn't do it that way. Oh, you don't have a chance. Oh, you're not in shape enough. Oh, you're not fast enough. Oh, you're not a good enough football player. And I can't say that I've ever reached the pinnacle, right? I, I didn't become a star tailback for Alabama, right? But I was on the team. I didn't become an Olympian, but I won a bunch of tournaments and got traveled around the country and, and, and fought internationally. Um, become an attorney, not a famous attorney, right? I mean, sure, I've been on TV and, and stuff like that, but you know, I'm a regular guy who, as Custom Auto used to tell Mike Tyson, the difference between the hero and the coward is they both feel the same. They both feel scared. They feel both feel timid. But the difference between a hero and a coward is that the hero, although he's scared, and he's clenching his teeth and he's starting to close his eyes, he takes a half a step forward. And when you take a half a step forward, folks, you can change your life, your journey, and you can make an impact on other people's lives. And today, I went into court with a fellow attorney in town, Craig Lawson, and we made a difference. Asked prosecutors to do something, they wouldn't do it. Our, our client was charged with you know, three felony crimes, three separate cases, multiple charges. Talked to several attorneys about what I wanted to do. Moved up the chain of command in the state attorney's office. No, 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 sorry, no. Other attorney's recommendations, that'll never happen. You have no shot. And we, we entered the race. We told our client we would give him our best. We did. And guess what? On an open plea, something that I always say, be careful, be careful, because it can go wrong. But we did an open plea, and we were able to get the judge to give this young man a second opportunity with three felony charges and to allow him to go into a uh, into a court-ordered diversion program. Time after time, motion after motion, I can't tell you in Broward County how many naysayers I, I've had. I've had other attorneys say, ah, oh, oh, what do you think? You, you think you're, no, I, I just, I'm competing against myself. I, I wanna be the best attorney I can be. If I take someone's case, I, I just, if it's a criminal case, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm going to jail or prison if I lose. If, if I, if it's a personal injury case, I just feel like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna survive? How am I gonna take care of my family? I, I gotta get this money, and, and, I, and I figure it out. And it's not because I'm so intelligent. I'm not. I'm an average guy. But I have persistence. I learned discipline through boxing, through football, through track, through failure, through failure by tripping and falling. I failed at a bunch of things. But then I knew what it took to have success and I appreciate it. Again, not some superstar that'll win a board that don't come up 500 man law firm. I didn't go to Harvard. I just keep plugging away. And a day like today, this morning, I didn't call that moon for the bad cops. I, I think that case wouldn't have been won if I didn't attack a case in a certain manner. Time after time, people say you can't do things. It's what you want to do.
I'm happy to be a lawyer today. I'm happy that I'm able to make a difference in someone's life. And you know, the crazy thing is, is you guys are gonna see if you go to like my Instagram or probably I'll put it on like my uh, Google, Google page, but a client, another client that we recently had success and that success was a different kind of success. It wasn't a slam dunk and the case went away with other people and it was a very serious first degree felony um, punishable by 30 years and we were able to get him probation and not be a convicted felon and it took a lot of work that took an effort right clinching your teeth and take a half a step forward like Customato says makes all the difference in the world so you know, I started this video out talking about if you don't enter the race, you can't win the race. Anyone who watches this vehicles, no doubt, I have obstacles every day. You should see me when I'm pulling my hair out trying to figure something out or I'm stressed or I'm upset and my best friends or my wife are going, hey, take a deep breath, like it's okay, you know. I go through that. We all go through that. When I was in school, I wasn't the smartest guy. I struggled. Why am I not a doctor? And people go, why did you become a lawyer? You know why? Because I was scared to take the MCAT. I was scared that my comprehension of organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, mostly organic chemistry, and physics was not sufficient. And there was no way that I was gonna be able to go to medical school in this country. And in my mind, I was embarrassed. So you know what I did, folks, in that situation? I did not enter the race. I did not take the chance. I did not fight and per, you know and persevere. I got scared and I didn't take the MCAT and then I decided to take the LSAT and I became an attorney. I don't know how I would have been becoming, how I would have done as a doctor, but I know that if I would have got into a school I would have worked real hard. I know that my primary physician went to some school in another country and he's from, you know, Jupiter, Florida. Sometimes when I was younger, that fear overtook me. But again, the sports, the sports, like someone telling me, oh, you're gonna get your butt whooped or you can't make the team or you can't play good enough. That motivated me to do it. With being a doctor, I was just going, man, think where I came from. I'm a guy that they came with, you know, from nothing, from parents that were. In a while, I look back and I say, you know what, Raj? You're doing okay. And I think everybody can do that. I don't like, I sympathize with people who don't go for it. Whatever you're doing in life, whatever you want to, to accomplish, if you don't try, man, if you don't conceive it, you can't achieve it. If you don't enter, you're not gonna win. You gotta do it. Um, and today's one of those days where I just say to myself, all those people that said, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't succeed, you can't get a judge to do this, you can't convince a prosecutor, you can't convince a jury, you, your facts aren't good, or you're not smart enough to become an attorney. Yeah, I've had people tell me, you're not smart enough to become an attorney. You, you won't be able to become an attorney. You won't get into law school. You won't get in, you won't pass the bar. I've heard people say that and I've heard the whispers too. They wrote me off, but I didn't write back. I saw that on TikTok recently. I didn't write back. They wrote me off, but I didn't write back. And I implore you to not write back to do everything you can to be the best version of yourself that you can be. 
That's all we can do, right? Be the best version of you for you so that when you have a family, when you have people in your life that need you, you can rise up and you can be that voice. You can be that symbol of strength. You can be that that positiveness. Positiveness, yeah. You can be that 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 positive force and in, in, to them. Um, you can be an example. Again, I don't view myself that way, but I know where I came from. And um, today was a good day. We did what other people said wouldn't be done. Now it's in the client's hands. And um, yeah, I'm happy. I appreciate you guys listening. I'm just arriving home and uh, I guess I'll post this. You guys have a great day. Have a great weekend. God bless y'all.